Look at the starting grid to this Sudoku. You notice how there are no eights? I'll show you my top three tips to solve puzzles with missing digits. And with that, it's solving time. So tip number one, hey, just solve the easy cells first. Don't worry about the missing digits. If you check out the ones, you may notice with these two ones and this one, you can solve for one and block one. And then with these two ones, solve for one and block four. And then with these two ones and the one right here, you can solve for one and block eight. And then with these two ones, you can solve here in block nine. Greetings, friend. This is the first puzzle from round three of the Sudoku Grand Prix. I found it interesting that there's no eight in the starting grid. So I'm gonna show you my three tips to solve this puzzle faster because of the missing digit and also explain why this is still a valid Sudoku. And before I show you where to solve next, I wanna hear from you. Should Sudoku starting grids contain all nine digits? Please, please, please share in the comments and help me grow the internet's best Sudoku community. So now let's look at the twos and work our way up. You might see with this two cutting across and this two coming up, column three, you have a pointing pair of twos in block one. Twos in the same column can't be anywhere else in this column, which restricts the twos of these two cells now in block four. And I'm just gonna mark any time a candidate is restricted to two places in a three by three block. It helps you find those restrictions a little bit quicker. And then with this two coming up, two places for a two in block five. And with this two and this two, two places for a two in block nine. Now move on to the threes. You'll notice with these two threes and this three, you can solve for three in block three. And then with this three and this three, solve for three here in block six. And then with these threes and these threes, solve for three in block five. And then with these threes and this three, solve for three here in block seven. Move on to the fours. Okay, with these two fours, you can solve for four in block nine. And then with these fours and this four, solve here in block six. And then you can see with this four and this four, Four is restricted here in block two and in block four because of these fours and this four right here. So I'll mark all that. We've made lots of progress and you haven't had to worry about the missing eight. And this is tip number two for you. This is why you don't need to worry so much. In fact, the tip is don't worry about naked singles. So a naked single is when there's only one possibility, one candidate in any particular cell. You can't have any naked singles right now until you solve the first eight, right? Because every cell can be an eight plus something else at this point in the puzzle. And so you can keep on going until you solve that eight and then you'll be able to switch those naked singles. Those can really trip you up quite a bit. And so we're gonna move on to the fives. There's actually a kind of a tricky solve going on here with the fives. I wanna show this to you. These are all the places a five can be in block six. Well, with this five cutting across, a five can't be there. Okay. And since this five cuts here and this five comes down, you have a pointing pair of fives in block four. So a five can't be here either. At least a five in three spots here, and you can still solve this. And the reason is, if you look here in column seven, where can a five go? Well, it can't go here or here because of this five and the pointing pair of fives. And it can't go here because of this five. So there's only one place for a five. So you can eliminate a five from those two spots and solve this cell for a five. All right, but we're not done with the fives. Another tricky five solve. Look across row nine. Where can the five go? Can't go here because of this five and it can't go here because of this five. So it's a hidden single five right there. You're not gonna find it by cross hatching, but you will find it if you focus on the row and then by doing that with this five cutting across and this five coming down you can mark fives in block seven 
Okay, move on to the sixes. Can we get some more solves with the sixes? Yep. The six and this six coming up. Only one place for a six in block three. And then what that'll allow you to do now is with these fives, you can solve for a five now in block three. And move on again with the sixes. You can look here in block seven because of these two sixes. Solve this cell for a six, which displaces that marked five. So you can solve that for a five. And now you can see with these sixes, two places for a six in block two. And with this six cutting across, two places here in block five. And with these two sixes, two places here in block eight. Okay, move on to sevens. With these two sevens, you can solve for seven in block eight pretty quickly. And then with these two sevens, solve this cell for seven, displacing that six. And once you displace that six, you can notice you can actually solve this cell now for a six, displace this six, and solve that for a six. We're not done with the sevens though. With these sevens and this seven, you can solve for seven here in block one. And with those two sevens and this seven, solve for seven in block four. And then with these two sevens and these sevens, solve for seven in block six. And if you look with the eights, of course, there's going to be nothing, right? Because you had not made any solves with the eights, except you could look here and go, well, two places for an eight in block three. And so the reason why a starting grid can be missing a digit like an eight and still be valid is because if you have eight of the nine digits present, you basically are going to be able to solve the other eight cells or positions in every row, column, and block, and you leave one missing. And so then you can fill in the eights for all those missing ones. You cannot, however, have two missing digits in a starting grid. So there's only one nine right here. If this nine was missing and the eights are missing, you'd have an invalid Sudoku that have multiple solutions because wherever an eight could possibly go, a nine could go and be swapped for it. And so you could keep swapping those locations and you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be able to know if you're solving a cell for an eight or a nine, but you can do it with just one missing digit. That is the reason. So let's focus on the nines now. With this nine, you got a pointy pair of nines here. You got, point, you got nines here in block four. And then with this nine coming down, you have a pointing pair of nines in block nine. And what does this do for us? It eliminates a nine from this cell, and you can solve a nine for right here. This is the break you've been looking for in this puzzle, because you're going to get the first solved eight right there. And so this is going to change everything about how you solve the remaining part of this puzzle, because this is my tip number three. Once you solve that first eight or that first digit that was missing, focus on that digit in heavy houses. You've just unlocked so much more solving you can do now because you actually have an eight on the board. And so let's look at the impact, row, column, or block. You might notice in column seven, there's only two digits missing. That's a six or an eight, which means that this has to be a two now, right? And so you can displace that two, solve this for two, displacing that nine. Leaves you a five, eight right here. Well, with this five, that's gonna be your five and that's gonna be your eight. And I know to look for the five because there can't be any other eights out here yet. You've only solved one so far. But this eight's gonna be very powerful, right? Because this has to be an eight now, leaving a nine right there. And then with these two eights, you can solve for an eight right here solving for a nine in block seven. See how powerful that is? And now at this nine, use those marks, combination with finding the eights to get your solves in. Okay, we get these two nines. You got a nine right here. A two's marked there. I look across the grid, no two. This has to be your two. And you can remove the two from right there, which now allow you to do some more solving here. You look right here, you got a nice full house. Eight of the nine digits filled out. The only thing missing, the nine, which is marked right there. So you can fill that in for a nine. And now with this two, you know that can't be the two. It's gotta be the eight, and this has to be a two. You kind of know the other digit's gonna be an eight, right? Because you haven't solved any other eights yet. And then right here, because of this five, displace that five, 
Solve this for a 5, displacing the 4, displacing that 2, which leaves you with just an 8 again in block 4. And now you can disambiguate the 8, 6 right here in block 6. See how that works? And you want to focus here. You got a 2 and a 4 to finish column 6. A 2 is right there, so that's got to be your 2, displacing that 4. Look over here. Solve that for a 4. This has to be an 8. And then you know that this is going to be your 9 because that last digit has to be an 8. Now see what happened when I found a puzzle missing two starting digits. Thank you so much for watching.